I have a 10-year-old daughter who has a congenital physical disability. She's a wheelchair user and she attends a mainstream public school. So the recent budget cuts to health, welfare and education are going to hurt us bad enough. But the real kick in the guts to families like ours during this budget emergency is the almost quarter of a billion dollars that's going to be spent on the National School Chaplaincy Program that's going to put Christian preachers into public schools, many of whom can't even offer counselling services, and they're going to displace well-qualified secular social workers and psychologists who are funded under the current arrangements. So last week, the Guardian newspaper reported that only 5% of Australians uh, support religious-only chaplains in public schools. So why can't the government think of a better way of spending $245 million to look after the most vulnerable students in our public education system? Corey Bernardi. Well, first of all, Tony, I have to say that you know, the government hasn't cut money from health or education. The second, the second point you make about chaplaincy is this, I actually think that you know, the ethos of our, of our community, the, the guiding principles of our law are based and built around Christianity. Now, you don't have to be a Christian to recognise there are inherent benefits to that. I support the federal government's chaplaincy program. I think it provides a pastoral care to students, I think, in a, in a consistent manner, and I think it's a, a really worthy program. But aren't they told, I, I was reading about this, yeah. and it seemed that they're not supposed to they're not supposed to proselytize. So, it, it, as someone was saying, it's like invite, paying a quarter of a billion dollars to invite clowns into the schools and tell them not to be funny. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <it's> like... <laughs> Catherine King. Well, Martin, thank you very much for your question and also sharing your personal story. I mean, this shows the priorities of the government uh, right at its heart. Uh, it's cutting funding to some of the most vulnerable students, uh, you know, schools across the country. It is cutting funding. It's cutting funding from health. At the same time, taking uh, qualified social workers, qualified psychologists out of our schools. And it just shows uh, where the government's priorities are. And we think they're wrong. We deliberately uh, changed the school chaplaincy program to include and allow schools to make decisions about who they wanted in their schools. I'm deeply concerned about social workers now, as a, a former social worker myself, uh, actually, you know, now not, not being in schools and actually being replaced by chaplains. I think there's something uh, quite disturbing. Catherine, about, I might interrupt you there because yeah. we actually have someone in that yeah. position who's asked a question tonight. Yeah. It's Richard Collis. Richard? So yeah. just hang on one second. Go ahead. Uh, two years ago, I started studying uh, youth work just down the road at Ultimo TAFE, um, and um, I firmly believe that the permanent funded staff who are in schools, who are responsible for the welfare of the young people, should be professionally trained youth and social workers yeah. who don't represent a particular faith through that, because we come from a youth-focused uh, approach, not from a faith-based approach. What do you guys think? Uh, well, you can continue, yeah. Catherine. I'll hear well, from the rest well, of the panel. Well, Richard's from. absolutely right. I think the importance and uh, of the youth workers who've been uh, in schools, of social workers, uh, not just providing pastoral care, but actually providing a professional counselling service, uh, has been really important. And again, I think the government's priorities on this are absolutely wrong. Uh, to cut funding uh, that would have provided uh, disability support for you, someone like your daughter uh, in schools, uh, at the same time as you know, doing this just seems to me to be completely the wrong way about it. What? I don't understand what this pastoral care is. These people aren't trained. They're not like social workers. They're not trained to work with children. And certain pe people, I think, you, who might provide pastoral care, you'd want to actually keep away from children. Uh, and, uh, you know, so... I, I just don't understand what, what, is, what is pastoral care if it isn't proselytizing. I just don't understand. It has no meaning whatsoever to me. Uh, Ultimately, the government can determine the priorities for the government. And the school chaplaincy program is designed to put chaplains within the school environment. If schools want to employ secular staff, if they want to employ social workers, they can do that. The schools are run what, by... What with? They haven't got any Goldsky well, money, well, so what the, the greatest IS. investment we can have in our children is not leaving them saddled with the debt that you lot racked up over so the last six years. So we get rid of Goldsky, we get rid of NDIS. But, but, I, but on the other hand, I think the greatest thing we can do for our children is encourage them to think for themselves, first of all, and provide them with the best education we can provide them with. Yeah. Chaplains have nothing to do with anything. Yeah. In that the greatest thing we can do for our children is leave them no debt.
in the future, so that my child and his children are not in a country burdened by debt. So that free education. Are you talking about free education now? <laughs> You're talking about children, does that include Hicks debt? That's my point. <laughs> yeah. But as far as I understand it, they're all right if they have debt, because if they die, then the government can take <laughs> yeah. it back. Isn't I, I was kind of shocked that you said, it's, I want you to repeat this if it's true, that yeah. you said that the government's decided this is a Christian country, and it's founded on Christian principles. So what about the people who aren't Christian? And, and, and is, that, is that a government policy? No, no, it's not about the government's decided this. I mean, if you look at the history of Australia, it was founded under the Christian ideals and values. That's informed our laws, it's informed how we interact with each other, it's informed our, our social I, that's mores. That's not what was my impression of well, Australia, you know, which is one reason you, I like you, to you come should, here. You should read our constitution. <laughs> you should read our constitution. It talks about un, under almighty God. I mean, there's the first, there's the first lines in it. But it this, doesn't actually say... Which God? It doesn't actually <laughs> say who's God. Yeah, it's going to say which God. <laughs> exactly. That's the key point. I, 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 God. I think it was pretty clear to the forefathers. The you can go back and have a little Henry Park and see what happens. Corey, we have to be honest here. We have moved on. We've got a new God, Gaia, yeah. and we all worship yeah. at Gaia, and as we should, and yes, we have a high priest yes. here from Gaia, and uh, mm. and this is no, terrific no, no, because no, 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 we have a new religion that we no, can no, base no, our no, country no, no. on. The and I'm glad we've got one of the priests and, here. The, no, the difference between <laughs> scientists and priests is we actually change our mind based on evidence. It's a real. Okay.